the mighty oak. Oh, I love it. <laughs> wow. Tall and strong. Tall and strong. Love it, David. Yeah. Very appropriate. So today we are talking about some more about the 494. This is 494 week. Um, and this video is about why we do the 494. Well, the 494 covers a broad range of tests and performance. You know, I'm just not that good at coming into town, opening up the back of the wagon, and having this magic elixir that's going to cure all and do all and solve all your problems. With like glitter and sparkles. Well, and yeah, you know, oh, whatever. Yeah. You, know, you know, Jess would be a fan of that one. We so. live in the West. You remember the old stories about the elixir salesman right, in the right. West in the wagon. I'm a data guy. I'm a science guy. You are totally a you data guy. You know, I'm going to need actual information, actual real data, hands-on data. You want a report you can hold on to. To tell people what it is they're going to get in this new ad mixture. Oh, absolutely. And that that's one of the reasons why you run it, really. I mean, initially, and we talked about in the last video, initially you're running tests on the specific ad mixture, but then you put it in concrete and you're trying to really evaluate what that ad mixture is doing for concrete. And something you often say, and it, it depends on what which one you're evaluating, but certain tests, it's not necessarily doing better. It's at least not doing any harm, especially with your special performance. Maybe there's one or two key factors that it's just off the charts awesome, and then it's okay in other ones, but at least it's not causing any issues. That's right. The ASTM, as we test various, various tests, we test strength, we test other things. So the mantra at ASTM, and you'll see that in 494 in the criteria, say for compressive strength has to be at least 90 percent of the reference right so on some of them though not all of them some of them have to be higher depending in, on what it is in compression it's 90 percent right. of the reference so that's the do not harm do no harm mantra right but if it's only as good or not quite as good then why would people buy it at all Sure. And it's, I, I would say it's those other features and benefits, hey. you know, if they're looking for something that helps ASR or, you know, some other components, it's not necessarily that strength increase, but right. it's the durability or, you know, whatever it is. But what's the hang up? Why do people, and I know this very well, and I know you do too. Why don't people want to do it? I feel like there's two reasons. Well, the foremost is, is it's expensive. It is freaking expensive. It it's, is. it's a broad spectrum of tests over a broad spectrum of time. It takes a lot. All the specimens have to be made at the same within the first oh, three days. I mean, the requirements are ridiculous. So like you, the lab that does it, and this goes back to, you know, and on the, on the top of it lab, um, you know what I mean, having that CCRL certification, but yeah, you've got three days of mixing, you've got to do three mixes for each one. I mean, just there's this list of requirements. Extensive um, labor. Yeah, extensive labor, and when we do it, we have the entire team doing rip and strips. Like, it's a lot, which is why there's the cost, because it's a lot of concrete and it's a lot of work, but it's the timeline too. It's the cost and it's the timeline. You're not, you know, getting a full report in 90 days. You've got to wait a year and on some of these tests a year and a half two years before you have your final final version of it yeah Colorado DOT is an example they will allow at least evaluate an interim report so you, right you can send them something less than 365 days but other states DOTs that's not true they're hard and fast the whole report has, has to, to be done be, has to be 365 so if it's that expensive and it takes that long is it worth it well, if you want to sell your ad mixture, I, you know, there, mm -hmm. there's some people who will use it and just say, Hey, you know, this looks cool. I like the glitter. Um, our four year old would be very happy with that, but most people need to see that, you know, they, it, it's a level of credibility, I think for the ad mixture. So I, I think that's why. Absolutely. You know, and let's take, let's take the other extreme. Uh, what's the, what would be the value of not having it? I mean, you didn't spend the money to create it, but if you don't have it, you're pretty much not going anywhere. Right. I mean, you, you've got a bottle of elixir that you've got to sell people, you know, hey, I'm charming, hey, I'm good looking, uh, buy this ad mixture. Sure. And that, that, that's just not, not going to work. Do you mind if I jump yeah, in? Yeah, please. Sure. Jump in with a question. Um, do you think folks sometimes run into the 494 too soon? I do. In the development of the admixture? 
they're too quick to dive into it before their product is actually ready. And then, then the issue is, you know, if you find out that you don't have the shelf life, you have things that are falling out of solution or whatever, then you have to go back to the drawing board and theoretically, I mean, if your admixture changes at all, you have to restart. So I think there's a sweet spot in doing it at the right time, but yes. Is it theoretical that you have to start it over? No, you have to start it over. Okay. <laughs> if, if, if the formulation changes, right. you're, you, you're, right. you're back at square one. Right. So, and, and I think that's the key to the answer, just as you were describing, that um, you've got to have a trade-ready product to test because when you get done, right. the 494 is going to name that trade name and that's what you're going to sell. So, you know, if you had a half a teaspoon of salt, I mean, you're right. you're, you're starting over. Your again. chemical composition is changing. Well, exactly. One of the things that I like to refer back to is the x-ray fluorescent signature. Sure. And if you add half a teaspoon of anything, right. Right. what's it going to do? It changes the formulation. <laughs> right. It's, you have chemical processes that are happening, and it, it's going to change that signature. Yeah. It, it's just that simple. You make a change, you start over again. It, so you, it, It's just that simple. Yeah. So you really <laughs> need to be, like, solid on your product, know that you have something that has the shelf life. And granted, you don't want to wait a long time because you have that year plus, you know, before you finish a report, but you don't want to go in too soon and have to worry about having to start over and then that cost associated. That's right. So. Otherwise, what you've done is, is lost cost. Right. And as we just said, it's, it's not a cheap process. Right. It's not at all. So. Yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for joining. Hope you learned something today. Go ahead and like, subscribe, click that bell for notifications. Go concrete! And let's be asshole. <laughs>